All right, guys, this is part one of a two-part uh, presentation on Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. Uh, so just a heads up, this, this stuff gets pretty heavy. You're going to want to have something to take some notes on in front of you and uh, just make sure that you're trying to follow along and pausing it where needed. I'm going to try and make it not too long, uh, and that's part of the reason I did break this into two specific parts. First of all, when we start talking about Aristotle, uh, we're really talking about teleological ideas. T teleology is the, the whole premise that things in nature are built for a certain purpose. So some of you may have heard of the teleological argument for the existence of God. Uh, teleology is this whole idea that, um, you know, if we look at uh, the universe, there seems to be an innate purpose built into it. Uh, and so, it's, it's important for us to say that it's, it's not enough for us just to be human in the sense that we are living and breathing, but that we as humans have some greater purpose built into us. Uh, that is to be an, an excellent human being uh, from Aristotle's point of view. Right. So because of the way natural thing is made, it very often has one kind of goal or purpose. Right. So, uh, you know, obviously our, our cell phones have have a purpose to communicate uh, for, to, to various things. Uh, this microphone is built for a particular purpose. Um, you know, we can argue uh, all sorts of things about nature, you know, certain foods that that are, are exist and have particular nutrients exist for a purpose for us to eat and consume and to be able to live. Uh, so things have a particular goal or purpose. And so that end or goal is called the, the telos. So when we start applying this to ethics, we're really talking about teleology is what is our goal? What is our end? What is it that we are striving to do or become in order to reach that tell us. So really the key question here is what is the goal of human existence? Um, this is obviously not a brand new question. Uh, it's at the very essential core of what is the meaning of life? Why am I here? Who am I supposed to be? That's really what philosophy, that's, that's at its essence, right? Now the way that Aristotle answers that, is he says our purpose is to achieve eudaimonia. Eudaimonia is our goal. And eudaimonia is oftentimes interpreted or translated as happiness. It's a little bit more than happiness. It's, it's a satisfactory life. It's to, uh, eudaimonia is happiness that comes from, from being satisfied with our lives, right? It's not that momentary, oh, I, I got an ice cream and now I'm happy. Oh, I dropped my ice cream, now I'm sad, right? Eudaimonia is, is lasting, it's genuine. It's something that, that permeates our experience and our essence and who we are. Aristotle says that the way to achieve eudaimonia, right, um, is through uh, virtue, right? So, and, and so his Nicomachean ethics, when Nicomachean actually comes from being named after his son, Nicomius, uh, Nicomachean ethics or virtue ethics is a system of understanding the human person based on this idea of pursuing virtue. Virtue being sort of a set of ideals that we as human beings can attain and uh, sort of uh, model ourselves to to, to, and work toward, right? So it begins with the understanding that uh, each entity has an end to which it's ordered. So a you know, lion is ordered to fertile a particular purpose in life. An ant has a particular purpose in life. Uh, the earth itself, the dirt, has a particular purpose in life. We have, as human beings, have a particular purpose to which we are ordered. And again, that is Daimonia comes into play. So one certainly a big question is is that well isn't happiness different for everyone? Isn't doesn't everyone have different things that are going to make them happy? Right? I like Rocky Road. You like vanilla, right? I'm sorry you like vanilla, but you know hey Rocky Road superior. Totally subjective. Is there any way to say hey there is a set of objective things that will make human beings all human beings happy. Uh, and so for Aristotle, 
Absolutely there is. Now, while we all may have different preferences, as we're going to see on the next slide, that um, there are aspects of our lives that are necessary for true, genuine, lasting happiness. Again, not, not talking spur of the moment. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm elated right now. Uh, but real, truly, true happiness. And, and for Aristotle, that common theme is virtue. A virtuous person is a happy person, according to Aristotle. And we'll understand that argument as we get delve deeper into this presentation. So because virtue is the thing that ultimately brings us the closest to being godlike. Now, again, he's talking about, you know, these celestial beings that in Greek, Greco-Roman times weren't necessarily the same ideas of God that we have today. Uh, the gods had a lot more human qualities than what we ascribe to our uh, Judeo-Roman Islamic understanding of, of God. But that idea is that there is this aim of perfection that we're striving to, uh, to, to achieve, right? So here's that analogy. Suppose everyone in the classroom has to give everyone a car. You get a car, 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 you get a car right? Um, Everyone wants to ultimately keep their car in tip-top shape. Now, some are going to decide to paint your cars red. Others want orange. Still others choose black. Uh, some want to have leather seats. Others are going to have vinyl or suede. There's all sorts of things that are totally up to every single person. You may have all sorts of different things that are going to make you happy about your car, right? Uh, we could even extend that to some people want a truck. Some people want a Jeep. Some people want a Hummer, whatever, right? All personal. Right. But the, the reality is that there are some things that are necessary to maintain that car. Like you can't all of a sudden decide that you're going to put sugar water or vinegar in the tank. It's simply not going to run. Right. So that's certainly not going to, to, to function or enable that car to function. So the same thing for us as human beings, that there's some things that that we need to accomplish that that are the same for all of us, while there may be you know, details of that, that are going to vary from person to person, how we achieve those ends or those goals, but the ends of the goals in and of themselves are going to be similar. And again, for Aristotle, going back, this is what virtue is. So what this really is all about is about trying to get our rational self, our, our spec, our reason and our, our practical reason and our book smarts to control our irrational appetites. Um, so our the irrational aspect of our, our self is divided into those things that we can't control and those things that we can control, right? Um, our, our appetites, our, our, our anger, our lust, our greed, right? Those are the things that our practical reason can control. And basically what Aristotle's saying is that the more that we control those things, the more that we practice those things, the more it becomes a part of our nature. So we're called to use our rational part of ourself to control the irrational side of ourself. Now, this isn't brand new, right? We've been doing this since we were little kids. Our parents were teaching us how to control our anger. You can't hit your brother. You can't hit your sister. Uh, you can't have a cookie before dinner. You can't give into those appetites. And we've constantly been using our practical reason, our, our street smarts to uh, control our appetites. And uh, now how, to what degree we do that in all aspects of our lives, that's something that we're continued to, uh, called to continue to form according to Aristotle. So again, that uh, Aristotle focuses on this relationship between the practical reason and our appetites. In order to do that, we need to develop virtue. And virtue for Aristotle is excellence or good habits, right? Most of us have, have formed good habits and have had a lot of good habits formed into us already, right? When we walk into a store, most of us don't have to consciously think, I'm not going to steal anything. I'm not going to steal anything. I'm not going to steal anything. Our parents have already instilled in us that when we go into a place, we have to pay for things. We can't just take what we want. We can't give into that greed. We've had that good habit instilled in us already, right? So a good or virtuous life is about habit formation. We have to bring our appetites in line with our practical reason. When our appetites are out of line with our reason, 
when we constantly have to uh, force ourselves to re and constantly remind ourselves to be that good person, that's when we're not very happy, right? So it's when it comes naturally, when we've established those things already, when we naturally do the right thing, when you naturally are that good person, that we find ourselves to be the happiest. And, and that's absolutely at the core of what Aristotle means by our ultimate goal, our ultimate end is eudaimonia. It's a consistent life. It's not having a battle between our appetites and our reason. Uh, so really, we constantly misquote Aristotle all the time. In this sense, practice makes permanent. It can't make perfect. The more we do the wrong thing, the more that simply becomes a part of our nature. The more we do the right thing, the more we will consistently do the right thing. So eventually we don't have to think about it anymore. Eventually we don't have to think about putting our fist in our mouth to you know, to say that wrong word or to, or to cuss. But eventually we won't have to worry about controlling our sexual lust and it, because it, it will become a, a natural part of, of who we are that will have gained some level of control over that. Not to say that we won't have those feelings, but that the rational part and will, will have ruled over our appetites.